not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. us the wisdom of God. When pain and sorrow weigh us down, be near to us, O Lord. Forgive the weakness of our faith and bear us up within your peaceful word. not seen, ear has not heard what God has ready for those who love him. Spirit of love, come give us the mind of Jesus. the wisdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. 
The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, Ask something of me, and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding heart to judge your people and distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, Because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for understanding, so that you may know what is right. I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise and understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now. And after you, there will come no one equal to you. The word of the Lord. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. I have said, O Lord, that my part is to keep your words. The law of your mouth is to me more precious than thousands of gold and silver pieces. Let your kindness comfort me according to your promise to your servants. Let your compassion come to me that I may live for your law is my delight. For I love your commands more than gold, however fine. For in all your precepts I go forward, every false way I hate. Wonderful are your decrees, Therefore, I observe them. The revelation of your words sheds light, giving understanding to the simple. Lord, I love your commands. Lord, I love your commands. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. heart and on your lips to proclaim his gospel worthily and well in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again. And out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of a household who brings from his storeroom both the old and the new, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field. Just about everybody likes to go on a treasure hunt, such as looking for buried treasure at the beach with a metal detector or in one's own backyard. Growing up in Atlanta, our house was located near a creek where a major skirmish of the Battle of Atlanta was fought during the Civil War or as some of my elders called it, the War of Northern Aggression. People would often find Union and Confederate bullets in the woods around our house, which was quite an exciting discovery. But my only real treasure hunt was for Easter eggs on Easter Sunday morning. When I was a boy, the Easter Bunny would always include a few plastic toy eggs with various amounts of money in them in order to inspire the frantic search for Easter eggs by my three sisters and me in our front yard. So imagine how excited each of us would be if we were to come upon unexpected treasure by winning the lottery or a sweepstakes contest perhaps finding oil or gold on, on our property, or receiving a large inheritance unexpectedly. All of these scenarios conjure up dreams of what a person might do with such a fortune. In the gospel parables of the treasure found in a field in the pearl of great price, Jesus speaks to us about the kingdom of heaven. In the first parable, we have a man who unexpectedly comes upon a treasure hidden in a field. So he goes and sells what he owns in order to purchase that field. In the days of Jesus, it was common practice for a wealthy person to divide his wealth into thirds. One third he would keep in cash for business transactions. Another third would be invested in precious stones and jewelry that could be easily carried and used as currency in another country. And this was done just in case the man had to flee his home country for one reason or another, such as religious or ethnic persecution. The last third of his fortune would be hidden in a field. 
Of course, if the man suddenly died and he didn't tell anyone where he had hidden that treasure, the treasure would remain buried in the field. Someone accidentally finding such a fortune buried in a field would do whatever he or she could to gain ownership of that field for themselves. You might ask, why didn't the man in this parable just take the money that he discovered and run away with it? Well, if caught taking money from a field he didn't own, he could be imprisoned or even executed for theft. However, once he actually owned that field, anything that was found on it or under it belonged to him. In the second parable, we have a dealer of fine pearls who's looking for the very best ones. And in Jesus' time, a pearl was a very scarce item. It held a place in their society somewhat similar to what a diamond has in our society today. When the pearl dealer would find a pearl of great, very great value, he, like this first man, would sell everything he could in order to possess that pearl. But in fact, what is the treasure that Jesus is really talking about in these two parables? The treasure that he's talking about is righteousness, forgiveness, and peace. All of these are spiritually priceless. More precisely is what we find in Jesus Christ. In our Lord are the treasures of heaven. They are hidden for one purpose, to be found by sinners like us. It is the treasure of God's love that is poured out on the cross in Jesus' blood. And that is more precious than gold, silver, pearls, or even cash money. So where can we find this treasure? The treasure is not hidden away in some place where it cannot be located. The treasure is here on earth and hidden right before our eyes. It can only be found in God's word, the Holy Bible. The treasure of Jesus Christ, his life, death, and resurrection has been written down to be found by each of us for our salvation. How is the treasure of Christ found by each of us in our own lives, sometimes by accident. Sometimes the riches of the kingdom are found by accident, like the man walking in the field who found a buried treasure. Or at least it might seem like us to, an act, to be an accident. In reality, it's no accident at all. In the course of life, God prepares each person's heart and he guides their steps and he leads them to the treasures of his kingdom, even without their sometimes knowing it or wanting it. A good friend once, t once told me that he had found God one day while walking past a church in a large city. His life had fallen apart in many ways, and he was beginning to feel that there was nowhere for him to turn. He wasn't looking for God, but there God was. Actually, the treasure was with my friend all the time. But seeing the church reminded him of God and the wonderful stories about Jesus that he had heard in his youth. It was both a reminder and a word of love from God to him. God leads us even when we aren't searching for him or serving him. But sometimes we do encounter God by searching for him. Sometimes the treasure is found by searching. Many people today suffer from a horrible void in their lives. It is an emptiness that is created by separation from God, a separation that is caused by sin and neglect of the spiritual life. Without God's healing and guidance through the sacraments of the church, people don't even know why they feel such a void in their lives. In their discomfort, they seek a way to fill that void. And some people try to find satisfaction in the pleasures of this world, or they try to find it in various forms of non-Christian spiritual practices. But strangely enough, the real treasure has always been available to them right before their eyes. 
to read God's holy word in the Bible and to come to understand that we are made to live in right relationship with our creator through God's grace in Christ Jesus. Ultimately, we always find God through his limitless grace, even when we aren't looking for him and simply find him by mistake. Or we find him when we are looking for him in all the wrong places. God opens our eyes of faith to see the treasure that is laid out before us. Through his holy word, God makes himself available to each of us and gives us the eyes and ears of faith to find his treasure. Notice that after the two treasures are found in the parables, the pearl and the fortune in the field, they are purchased by the two founders. It cost almost everything that both men had to purchase those treasures. If this is the case, then how could we ever purchase the treasure of life in Jesus? We know that there is nothing that we could actually sell to purchase a corner of heaven. The good news is that the price has already been paid for us. We possess the treasure of life in Jesus Christ by our baptism and by our ongoing faith in him who is able to pay the price for us. Jesus paid the price for us by his death on the cross and his resurrection for us. He gave up the glory that he had with the Father in heaven and came down to earth becoming man. Jesus purchased God's kingdom for us by giving up everything, even his own life on the cross. In Christ Jesus, we already possess the pearl of great price and the hidden treasure in the field. His is a treasure that is undeserved and unexpected. It is like an inheritance that we did not expect to receive. We are heirs of God's treasure given to us because Jesus died for us. All that was his is now ours. The treasure, the righteousness, the forgiveness and peace are ours through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, let us profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead 
and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord speaks to us as he spoke to King Solomon. Ask what you would like me to give you. In prayer, let us come to him and seek the hidden treasure, the pearl of the kingdom. For an end to mob violence in our cities and a return to domestic order and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For religious freedom in our land and an end to the vandalism of Catholic churches and statuary, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all affected adversely by the pandemic, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an awareness of the preciousness of human life from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially Elaine Rabb, Connie Rubinskis, Chris Barbian, Mary Metcalf, Bill Hoffman, and for all those listed in the bulletin, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Annette Hill, Sue Smith, Rhonda Fidel, Jan Barbian, and for Ken Keller, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of provident love, you call people into your kingdom. You make all things work to their good. We are confident that you hear our prayers and that you will grant our request through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are they, the lowly ones, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst, they shall have their fill. Rejoice and be glad, blessed are you, holy are you, rejoice and be glad, yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who seek peace, they are the children of God. Blessed are they who suffer in faith, the glory of God is theirs. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who suffer hate all because of me. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom. Shine for all to see. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just to give you thanks and raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church from every people, tongue, and nation. And having filled her with life by the power of your spirit, you never cease through her to gather the whole human race into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus our Lord you promised would last for eternity. And so, with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people. Together with Francis, our Pope, 
Edward, our bishop designate, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with St. Benedict, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Happy are those who show mercy, mercy shall be theirs. Happy are the pure of heart, for they shall see God.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, just a reminder, please take uh, the bulletins so that are in the pews. Those are for you uh, to take home to um, keep, keep aware of what's going on here in the parish. Also, there will be confessions right after this Mass, beginning at 11 o'clock, going to um, going to noon. Um, and also, uh, remember that there are offertory baskets uh, in the church, uh, the narthex, and also in the uh, outer um, hall here. Uh, please be generous uh, to your parish during this time. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel. Amen. Amen. Our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks. Take your part, oh, praise him, alleluia. All you whom pain and sorrow bear, praise God and lay on him your care. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. their creator bless and worship God in humbleness oh praise him alleluia oh praise the father praise the son and praise the spirit three in one oh praise him oh praise him hallelujah Alleluia, Alleluia.